You might remember him from fighting his teammate on the pitch, or his monster yellow card count. But for two years, Lee Bowyer walked a knife edge, unsure if his season would end with him lifting the Champions League trophy or rotting in prison. Today we explore his volatile and violent life as EPL's most notorious. Lee Bowyer was born in Canning Town, London. His father, a scout for Charlton Athletic, steered him to football from a young age. The two were always seen training together, spending hours in the local parks, on the beaches of Tenerife and even after his youth team sessions. His father drilled him to be determined. Lee made his professional debut for his father's team at 17, and by his second season was an addict's regular. He appeared 52 times and scored an impressive 14 goals from midfield in the 95-96 First Division season. But as soon as his career started, it was nearly all over. Bowyer failed a drugs test for cannabis, was banned from the England under-18 squad, and suspended by Charlton until he completed an FA-sanctioned rehabilitation course. But he still showed promise, and got a breakthrough move to Leeds United the same year. Leeds had been riding a wave of top five finishes with strong European campaigns, albeit on the back of some irresponsible financial practices. They splashed £2.8 million for Lee, a then record fee for a British teenager. He debuted well, but again his playing was overshadowed when he hit the headlines following a horrific incident at a McDonald's. At 6am after a night of heavy drinking, Lee and three friends entered the restaurant to find only the breakfast menu available. Lee exploded, screaming, I don't want a fucking breakfast, I want a fucking quarter pounder, before hurling chairs and racial slurs at Asian members of staff. The whole affair was captured on CCTV and quickly became national news. Bowyer was charged with the fray, avoiding jail time. He was fined £4,500 and ordered to pay the two victims, one who required stitches to their head, a pitiful £175. In the following seasons, Lee became the centrepiece at Leeds, dominating the midfield with his infinite stamina, unbuckling determination and true box-to-box -box quality, regularly putting up double-figure tallies of goals and yellow cards. Lee became an excellent big game player and stepped up no matter the opposition, and with him running the trenches, Leeds reached the semi-finals in both the UEFA Cup and Champions League in 2000 and 2001, with Bowyer scoring crucial goals against AC Milan, Barcelona and Anderlecht. But off the pitch, a different story was unfolding. After another night of heavy drinking, Lee and a group of friends, including teammate Jonathan Woodgate, left a strip club after one associate was ejected for, quote, threatening behaviour. Once outside, the group got into an alleged verbal confrontation with two Asian men, which spilled into a large fight. In the melee, one of the men was left unconscious with a fractured leg, broken nose and bite marks plus a heel imprint to the face. The other suffered minor injuries. Woodgate and Bowyer were vilified in the press, so much that the first attempt at a criminal trial was dismissed after a high-profile story appeared in the Daily Mirror, the court deeming it would influence the proceedings. At the second trial, much was alleged about Lee's involvement. He was identified at the scene by witnesses, despite claiming to have not been present during the fight itself. He was identified on CCTV, triumphantly embracing one of the group in the aftermath, and blood from one of the victims was found on his jacket. Another witness stated seeing Bowyer participate in the beating of the then unconscious victim by, quote, punching and kicking him with some considerable force. The court was told that Woodgate placed a call to Bowyer after the incident to discuss, quote, what they could do about it, but Bowyer refused to elaborate when questioned by the police. The legal process lasted nearly two years and coincided with Lee's footballing peak. He would often be seen travelling straight from court to play the biggest games of his career, surrounded by paparazzi and jeering members of the public. Lee was not convicted and walked free although he did make an out-of-court settlement of £170,000 to the victims in 2005. Jonathan Woodgate was found guilty of a fray and sentenced to 100 hours of community service. Although he was acquitted, his time at Leeds was never the same. The club suffered a PR nightmare and attempted to fine Bowyer four weeks' wages over the incident, as he had broken the club's code of conduct by being drunk on the night in question, the only wrongdoing he ever admitted to. Lee ripped up a five-year contract worth £10 million and demanded to be transfer listed. 
He also earned a lengthy European ban for a brutal stamp on the head of Malaga's Gerardo Garcia in a UEFA Cup tie. The incident was initially missed by all four officials in the game, and Lee escaped with only a yellow card on the night. But in a later review, UEFA branded it an, quote, act of assault and particularly dangerous, doling out a six-game ban. Leeds agreed a blockbuster £9 million transfer to Liverpool, but negotiations broke down when manager Gerard Houllier doubted Boyer's commitment, stating he had, quote, neither the hunger or desire to play for the club. His contract expired, and in the January window he signed a six-month deal at West Ham. Bowie was brought in to try and save the club from relegation, but at enormous fan backlash. Rumours swelled of a £1 million bonus for Bowyer if he helped pull it off. He didn't, managing only 10 league appearances after being hampered by ankle injuries. West Ham were relegated, and he was left without a club. Lee secured a move to Newcastle on a free transfer, but he was reduced to a bit part role in a declining side. Injuries and negative press dulled his playing, but his volatile temper was still as bright as ever. Arguably, Lee hit rock bottom in 2005. While Newcastle flirted with relegation after three seasons in the top five, Lee amassed 13 yellow cards and three dismissals that season. The third red card being one of the most bizarre and disturbing moments in Premier League history. Three goals down at home to Aston Villa and already playing with 10 men, Lee demanded to know why teammate Kieran Dyer had not been passing the ball to him. A frustrated Dyer replied, quote, Because you're f***ing shit. And as soon as he'd said it, Boya squared up and the two had a fist fight, right in the middle of the game. Eventually they were dragged apart and both sent off. Boya, shirt torn and dishevelled, was led off by a soon to retire Alan Shearer, the captain visibly disgusted by his moronic conduct. Dyer sums up the fight as, quote, I was thinking, he can't possibly attack me in front of 52,000 people, but boy did I get that wrong. The red mist came, I grabbed him by the neck, and then all of a sudden there's haymaker after haymaker. Newcastle manager and recurring bruiser Graham Souness called the two pathetic, offering to fight them both at the same time in the dressing room, before reviewing footage and placing the blame squarely on Boyer as he threw the first punch. Soonest dragged the two out for a post-match press conference to apologise, and they looked like absolute children. It's truly one of the most embarrassing and humiliating things I've ever seen in my life. Both players are still ridiculed about it to this day. Bowyer was fined £30,000 and banned for six games by the FA, fined six weeks wages by Newcastle, and charged with a public order offence and fined a further £1,600 by Northumbria Police. Bowyer and Dyer reconciled after the incident and were, quote, still mates, both deeming the brawl not personal. After a two and a half year stint back at West Ham, Lee went to Birmingham, initially on loan and then on a free transfer in the summer. Now in his 30s, Lee's experience made him indispensable. The Blues enjoyed a 15 game unbeaten run in their first season back in top flight football, finishing 9th, the club's best result for more than 50 years. But trouble was never far away. Lee had to apologise after verbally abusing a West Bromwich fan upon being substituted, and his on-pitch violence again caused controversy after an incident where he stamped on and raked his studs down Bakary Sanya's Achilles tendon. Again, his violent outbursts were initially unnoticed by match officials. In the post-game furor, there were calls for Boya to face another extended ban. Birmingham manager Alex McLeish argued that video evidence wasn't being used consistently among all teams and his player was being unfairly singled out. Lee received a standard three-match ban for violent conduct. Lee played the one cup final of his career in 2011, winning the League Cup against Arsenal, before retiring after one year at championship side Ipswich Town. He retired as the all-time leader for Premier League yellow cards, earning 99 in 489 appearances. This has since been passed by Wayne Rooney and Gareth Barry, although they both played significantly more games. Towards the end of his career, Lee gave an interview bemoaning his solitary England cap, claiming his skills on the pitch should have earned him at least 20 to 30, and blamed his lack of national football on a, quote, campaign to keep him out. Without wasting too much time on it, here's a non-exhaustive list of English players from his playing time who did his role better, but with less of the trouble. Steven Gerrard, Paul Scholes, Frank Lampard, Paul Ince, Michael Carrick, Ray Parler, Gareth Barry, Scott Parker, Jamie Redknapp, Nicky Budd, Steve McManaman, Kevin Nolan, Owen Hargreaves, Danny Murphy, Jermaine Genus, James Milner, Jordan Henderson, and Jack Wilshere. 
Since retirement, he had unremarkable managerial spells at Charlton and Birmingham, and is currently out of work. But eyes a return to management while spending his time carp fishing in France. At 46, I'm sure he's a carefree and lovely guy out on the lake, but in the eyes of many, he will forever be EPL's most notorious. And once again, please do drop a like and sub if you like this so I know to make more of them. Leave a comment on who you want featured next time. Cheers.